Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this uh, episode, we're going to be looking at the live coding toolkit for Pure Data. This is the first part of a multi part series on the live coding toolkit. Um, up until this point, uh, we've only been using PD vanilla um, objects. This is the first time we should be looking at this external library. The reason for that is that um, many of the objects in PD are quite low level, which is great for building instruments. Um, but when it comes to live coding, where music needs to be created reasonably uh, efficiently and quickly on stage, uh, then some larger scale abstractions seemed useful. So the Live Coding Toolkit is a toolkit which I've written. Uh, it's available on GitHub and uh, you can download it um, and install it. When you do so, you'll need to make sure that you set um, PD preferences path settings so that it includes um, the path to the Live Coding Toolkit. Um, when you do that, then the um, abstractions will be available. Abstractions are sort of predefined um, patches which load up when you've got the library installed. So let's give it a go. Um, in this project, we're going to just introduce a few of the um, objects, the abstractions that are in the live coding toolkit. Um, we're going to use as, as an example in terms of a piece to do. Um, a, we're going to create um, Steve Reich's piano phase piece. I've done this in an earlier video in this series in PD, um, and it's interesting to contrast what, the way in which we'll do it here with that video. Um, and hopefully you'll see if you do that contrast that uh, you'll see that the objects that are in the live coding toolkit make the generation of this much uh, more straightforward. Just to reiterate, the piano phase is this uh, sequence here played on two pianos. Um, they play, they start together, and then the instruction on the score is for one of the pianists to accelerate very slightly until they're um, uh, kind of one um, sixteenth note out. And then they lock together again, and then speed up, and then lock together and speed up and lock together. So that's how the piece proceeds. So let's get started. Um, the first. Um, object I'm going to introduce you to is the tempo object. This is part of the live coding toolkit and it's kind of an abstraction around the metronome um, object which you're probably familiar with if you've been working with PD. So like the metronome um, you toggle it on and off and the tempo takes two arguments, the beats per minute, 90 beats per minute in this case, and then the subdivision of the beat that's going to be um, output. So in this case it's um, quarter of a beat, or sixteenth notes. So when we start it, you'll see that uh, that bang is flashing at that rate, at a quarter of 90 beats per minute. So this is going to be um, our pulse that we're going to use for our work. The next object which we're going to look at is called Cycle. Uh, cycle creates a, a loop of various lists. We're going to start with some arguments, um, a MIDI pitch, a MIDI velocity, um, and a duration. So 60 is middle C, 100 is a relatively loud MIDI velocity, and 1 means that we're going to just have an isonic, iconic, isonic? a steady rhythm um, which is going to go for one pulse, one pulse, one pulse. So every pulse basically is going to be output as a rhythm. So we connect that up like so um, and that's going to be outputting things. We can check to see that that's um, outputting data. If I put a bang out here, you'll see that that's going. If I put a number box there, you won't see the individual ones but that uh, outlet is sending out the pitch data, which in this case is cycling through a list of one, which is just 60. And similarly, um, the second outlet is a cycle through all of the velocity values, and there's only one at present. So we're just getting a stream of middle C notes. 
notes coming out. In order to play this back and get some noise, uh, I'm going to, for this particular video, just send out the information via MIDI. Um, the MIDI um, object in the live coding toolkit takes several arguments. The first one is a default velocity. The second one is a default duration. Um, and the third one is a MIDI channel. So when I connect the pitch up, you'll hear that I've got my MIDI connection out to a digital piano. And uh, that's what we're hearing as we go here. I can connect up the velocity as well. I might just turn the piano down a little bit. I can connect up the velocity as well. Um, but in this case, uh, 100 was out of fault, and so that's not making any difference yet. So what we need to do is to put some lists in. I'm going to start with a short list of just some velocities. So instead of just a single 100, we're going to have um, a list which is going to be four long. And when I connect that um, into the velocity inlet and bang it, You'll notice that you get some more dynamics if I turn it up. So we're now getting a cycle through these um, particular dynamics. Just need a bit more space above. So I'm also going to put in a pitch list, um, and this is the pitch list for the um, uh, piano phase score. So rather than type that in, I've got it pre-prepared here. It can be any list you like. So this is the list of pitches from that score that we saw. Put that in the pitch inlet and bang it. And that's starting to sound a little bit more like piano foes that we know. So let me just pause that for a sec. So another thing that we can do out of the last inlet of the tempo and into the last inlet of the cycle if we connect those together, basically we'll get a trigger whenever we restart the tempo object. It will restart the cycles back at the beginning of the cycle so they all sync up. Alright, so that's one of our two pianos. Um, and basically we can just copy and paste all of this to create the second piano part. Um, what we'll need to do is, in order to synchronize those two piano parts, I'm going to have a toggle which triggers both of the parts at the same time. So I'll turn that off and then start both of them. Uh, before I do that though, uh, the only change we'll make because the is to move our second part to MIDI channel 2. So it's playing on two different MIDI channels. Okay, so it started the second part on middle C with 100. Um, we can bang both those, restart. So they're now playing together, exactly the same phrase. So the thing that happens in the Steve Rock piece is that the tempo changes. So we can just change that tempo very slightly just to 91 beats per minute that will accelerate the second piano compared to the first one I'm going to prepare for when we want to lock them together again to be able to put this tempo back to 90. So we click 90 now, so we've got them both locked in at the same tempo. We can then click 91 again, speed up the second piano. They go back out of phase. And at any time, I can click 90 again to lock them back together. 
and whenever we're ready to finish we just turn off the main toggle and so that's how you can create um, a piece in the, using the life coding toolkit objects we've used three of them tempo cycle and midi tempo just makes it fairly straightforward to increase and decrease tempo cycle allows us to loop around a sequence in this case a sequence of pitches and a sequence of uh, velocities and then the midi object provides a fairly straightforward way of sending out those midi values out to an external instrument that's connected so that's it for this video an introduction to the live coding toolkit um, have a go at that um, and in other videos in this series on the live coding toolkit we'll introduce more and more of the objects as part of that toolkit see you then